French President Emmanuel Macron is hosting his Ukrainian counterpart, Volodymyr Zelensky, in Paris for talks on escalating tensions with Russia. They will be joined on a video call by German Chancellor Angela Merkel. There's been growing alarm in recent weeks over Russia's military buildup along its border with Ukraine. Moscow has also moved warships to the Black Sea, to the Ukrainian south, and there's been a spike in clashes in Ukraine's Donbass region between the army and pro-Russian separatists. Now, the talks in Paris are a show of support for Kiev, which after Russia's annexation of Crimea, now says it fears another invasion. Tensions in eastern Ukraine boiled over in March and April 2014. Following Russia's seizure of the Crimean Peninsula, pro-Russian separatists proclaimed a new republic in the eastern Donbass region. The government launched a military operation in response. That began a grinding conflict that's claimed at least 14,000 lives so far. Month by month in 2014, the atrocities mounted. In May, clashes in the seaside city of Odessa left dozens dead. A months-long battle for Donetsk airport saw the facility reduced to rubble. Then, in July, pro-Russian forces shot down a Malaysian airliner over the conflict zone, killing all 298 people on board. An international investigation was hampered by evidence tampering, but concluded that a Russian-made anti-aircraft module had launched the fatal strike. In September 2014, NATO certified that Russian troops were coming over the border to help the separatist cause. Things took a turn in early 2015. In February, Germany and France brokered a deal that resulted in a shaky ceasefire. Though it was violated often, the ceasefire kept the conflict at a simmer for the following two years. In September 2019, a prisoner swap between Russia and Ukraine gave hope that further de-escalation was possible. But though the conflict disappeared from the headlines, it never really went away. In early 2021, clashes again erupted in the Donbass, and Russia again massed its own troops and hardware at the border. More trouble in a region that hasn't known peace in years. And we are joined now by Vadim Pristaiko. He is Ukraine's ambassador to the UK and the former foreign minister and former deputy prime minister. Welcome to the program and thank you so much for joining us. We've heard that your president will speak with President Macron and Chancellor Merkel within the next couple of hours. What does Ukraine want from France and Germany today? Hello. Thank you. The president is meeting President Macron as we speak right now. And the uh, chancellor will, will join them by video, as you mentioned, just in a couple of minutes. What we hope to achieve this time is to allow our leaders to meet in a Normandy format. We've been waiting for this for quite a while, meaning that we will have to have president, chancellor, and president Putin at the table. The last time, as you remember, was in last December, where we agreed first on ceasefire. Now we have that even this first item is not fulfilled. We lost already 27 soldiers since the 1st of January this year. And we have heard, uh, you know, we've been having, hearing all of these reports about the, the Russian troop buildup in the region that is higher than at any time since 2014. What are your greatest fears? What do you think Putin's intentions are? Obviously, the, the analysis which was done in, in just previously by your journalists is very comprehensive one. What we fear the most is the full-scale invasion to Ukraine. I have to tell you, just to give you how, how it is perceived in Ukraine, today the Kiev's uh, authorities uh, publicized the map of the uh, shelter, the bomb shelter for the population, just in case people start buying imperishable foods. So that's how high expectations and the fears in Ukraine. We understand that it's not enough yet to full invasion because our army, with the help of our Western partners, became much stronger over these seven years. Still, the forces are incomparable. And we will have a very difficult time to take over and go over the, the border and over the separatist control areas to the Ukraine itself. There's been a lot of talk, tough talk on your side. And, and your foreign minister, for example, has said that Russia will suffer if it crosses the red line of the state border. What do you mean suffer? 
I believe he means that we will not allow anybody to come, and in Russians especially, this historic rivalry between Ukraine and, and Russia, and it's not the first time they're coming to our land. We know how many people we already lost. It's around 14,000. 3.5 of, of them is the military, the rest is civilians. We understand that we are also making some casualties on the other side, which Russia is hiding from their own population. But if it is a full-scale attack, the, even Putin won't be able to hide from the public, from Russia public, how much his, his behavior, how much his actions in Ukraine. Vadim Prestaiko, Ukraine's ambassador to the UK, former foreign minister, former deputy prime minister, we thank you so much for joining us on this day where we know uh, President Zelensky is meeting with Macron and Merkel. Um, and just a quick apology to our viewers. We know there were some technical difficulties, but Mr. Ambassador, we're, we're glad we got to hear um, what you, the message that you have to bring today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.